Let's uh, take a look at uh, some of these uh, function keys, uh, these two rows up here. Uh, this first one is for uh, min max, and um, it will beep every time it detects a, a new value change, and it drives me, uh, let's see, what's the word I want to use, crazy? Um, so I like to turn the beeper off. Uh, you can turn the beeper off on this thing. You can control some things on setup. And the way you do that is you simply um, hold down the Hertz key when you power it on. So I'll go ahead and hold this button down, turn this on to any range, and you should see it says um, beeper DS, and that means that it's now turned off. And I don't have to listen to the beeper. <laughs> so just personal thing. Here I put in approximately 10 volts. And so I'm going to go ahead and enter the min-max mode by pressing the record button here. You can see it lights up um, an R and then the min and the max. And now I'll just change it. I'll go up. Uh, there's 10 volts. I'll go up to, say, um, 15 or 16 volts and drop down to 8 or 9 volts, uh, down to, I guess, about 7. And then what I can do is I can then cycle through those values. So uh, we could take it back to approximately the 10 volts. Not required, of course. And if you press this, then you can see the maximum was 16 volts. Press again, you can see that the enunciator says minimum was 7 volts, which it was. And you can also get the difference between the minimum, uh, the maximum minus the minimum, which was approximately 9 volts. And then if you push it again, it will go back into the min-max uh, for any future updating. And this works on all the ranges. And then if you push and hold it for over a second, it cycles out of that particular mode. Crest is somewhat similar. It does also a uh, min and a max, but the difference here is this only works on a, a few of the uh, modes. For example, AC current, DC current, AC voltage, DC voltage, and it can capture things up to about 800 microseconds, so really fast transient uh, peaks, and that can be very handy for troubleshooting. And it, the difference here is the enunciator is a C instead of the R, and it just goes through the same min, max modes again, as you can see right there, and you can do a subtraction from it. And holding it down, you can hop out of that. Uh, the delta is basically at, uh, whatever measurement or really whatever's really on the display is simply uh, arithmetically subtracted from all the following measurements. So good, for example, uh, if you want to zero out your leads or something like that, we can go over to ohms, connect them together. You know, I have the beeper turned off. And you can see, whoops, it's pretty high. Let me see if I can grab that a little better. Um, you can see we have that, so it looks a little bit better, about 0.1 ohms, and it's going to change a little bit as it sort of settles in. And you can just press the rail button and zero that out, so now it's zero. And all subsequent measurements, it's going to take that 0.8 ohms or 0.08 ohms and subtract it from whatever you're reading. And you can do that on multiple ones. So it's kind of nice, you know, you can go back, for example, to DC voltages. Um, I can hook up that DC voltage again. Just kind of clip it on there. And we're reading our 10 volts, and maybe I want that as a reference point. So I just press the rail button. It subtracts it out. And now if I increase the voltage and I'm reading 3.1 volts or something, that's 3.1 above uh, the 10. And so if I push this off there, you can see the 13 where it's added them together. As I mentioned before, the 500,000 uh, count, 50,000 count, it just cycles back and forth. You pick up that extra digit only again on some modes. Select button, as we talked about before, chooses a lot of these uh, yellow ones. An example is if I'm in the uh, dB measurement mode right here, and obviously there's a DC voltage coming in, so it's drifting around. But just to show this, um, if I press dBm, if you notice there, it brought up a resistance, and I can now cycle through the different re resistance re references. So you can see it goes all the way through. There's 250 ohms, 300 ohms, 500, 600. And then it'll cycle back down. And there's 4 ohms. This is a nice 4 ohm speaker. There's 8 ohm speaker for dB, 16 ohm speaker, a 32 ohm speaker, a 50 ohms, pretty standard value. Most My entire lab's pretty much set up for 50 ohms. So bounce back and forth between 50, 75, uh, and 600. And again, you can um, select out of that. Just go back into the... Uh, normal measurement. You can also, if you're on a particular range, if we go back to DC volts, um, we can select uh, the range manually. So we're in auto mode right now. Pushing this will cycle you through the different ranges. You can see the decimal point is moving over as I'm making those measurements. And there it's down 300, it's down slow value, so it's overranging.
Now we're back to auto ranging. Hertz is a little confusing um, because you know you have a Hertz over here, but the difference is if you see there's a square wave by this position, this is telling you it's going to measure the frequency um, of a um, pulse waveform or digital waveform, and it's setting uh, the trigger level to optimize for that. When you're in the pushing the Hertz mode to measure a frequency, um, then what happens is you actually get a choice of uh, different trigger points as a function of your scales and you can choose uh, one to four different trigger points. So the recommendation in the manual is, you know, f first measure the signal you want to measure the frequency, then measure the frequency, and you've optimized for your triggering. The, up, up, this one appears for uh, current loops, 20 milliamp current loops. Um, the whole button is a bit of a disappointment in that it simply just uh, holds whatever's on the display. So we have our 13.233 volts. And if I just press this, it's now held. And if I was disconnected, as you can see, it's holding. But the nice thing is I like the auto systems, like on the flukes that I have, that you touch it, it beeps at you and captures that and then holds it. Great if you're in a hard place, you can't read your meter. You know, you can make that little tap and then come back up and read it, or you're not poking maybe around high voltage or something like that. Okay, I've turned the lights off. It's going to be a... Um, a little noisy because I raised the video gain of the camera quite a bit so it can show it up. And to turn the uh, backlights on, you just hold the select button down for uh, about a second or two, and you can see the, the lights come up. And they're right there, and it's kind of critical on viewing angle. If I tilt it up, you can definitely, it's definitely functional, you can definitely read them, but um, bottom line, I really don't like the looks of this at all. I think uh, kind of a disappointment. Could have been better. And then it auto goes off. Also, by the way, the uh, DMM will go off automatically. Uh, it has an APO system. After about, I think, 17 minutes, it will shut down unless there's activity. And you can turn that off, too.